Hi, my name is Uri. Um, something that hasn't come up tonight at all is foreign policy or America's role uh, towards the rest of the world. I was wondering on each side, what's something that defines your side's approach to this issue and why that's superior to the other side? Thank you. That's a great question. I'm glad you brought it into the conversation. Let me take it first to uh, the side arguing against the motion. Uh, Robert George. I, I don't think that there is one thing uh, that defines the conservative or the liberal view on foreign policy. Now, individual politicians, Donald Trump, Hillary Clinton, have their particular views about uh, foreign policy, for better or for, or for worse. Uh, but what we really need in foreign policy is a broad consensus across the parties, which we had during the Cold War. And that served us very well during the Cold War. Now we face a different set of challenges. Things are not nearly as simple. They were terrible under, in, in the Cold War. We wouldn't want to go back to that. But we have a more complex set of challenges today. And uh, I, I think we all need to be working to try to find that consensus that reasonable people of goodwill can join in across the ideological spectrum and across the, the parties. There is no conservative foreign policy or liberal foreign policy just as such. Is that, do you agree with that, other uh, side? For the most part, yes, but. Um, I do a lot of work in foreign policy. We work very well with our Republican counterparts, probably the last place in Washington where Democrats and Republicans do see eye to eye most of the time. The big difference is this, in, in general, and, and boy, have Democrats screwed up. The Vietnam War was on us for the most part. Iraq, the second Iraq War, was on the Republicans for the most part. So I agree. Yeah. We're all, the, I think there is a substantive difference. I think Democrats tend to require better records on human rights from those people we help than the Republicans do. I think the Republicans in general are less interested in human rights and more interested in practical willing to leave that out of the equation. I think America always has to stand up for human rights. We are not perfect, but if you don't aspire to a higher level of achievement and humanity, you never get there. David Brooks, uh, is that a fair characterization? That liberals are more focused on human rights and pursue it No, I, you know, I was so-called neoconservative. That's what we cared about. We wanted to defeat the Soviet Union to preserve the, new, the human rights of the Soviet Union. We went into Iraq because we thought it would help for democracy around the world, and that we overstepped in that, in that case. Yeah. But it was, all, it was a human rights-based, democracy and freedom-based foreign policy that Ronald Reagan stood for. The, the case for Soviet Jews was really led by conservatives. There were Democratic conservatives like Scoop Jackson as well as Republican ones. Now the question of persecution of Christians abroad and what we're going to do about persecution of, of, of Christians in the Middle East tends to be led by conservatives. Now there are liberals, and I'm really glad that there are as well, but I don't think we can, uh, we can go with uh, Governor Dean on this one. I think that conservatives and liberals both have pluses and minuses. Melissa well, Harris-Perry, to finish this thought? You're, you're, you'll pass? No, I gave that one to, to, to Dr. Howard. Dean.